What's up, everybody? Thrones Metal here once again. I'm the Croc Nick. I'm Jamin John. And we have yet another album review for you, and one that, all right, I'll be honest, I kind of forgot about this band for a while, and then they resurfaced after, I would say, like eight years of inactivity. I was like, oh my God, I remember really loving that band. So <laughs> we really wanted to go over this new album. So we're going to go over the latest offering and first offering in eight years from Ancients, Beyond the Reach of the Sun. This also comes on the 30th of August on Season of Mist Records. This band formed in 2009 in Vancouver. This is their third album overall. Again, their first one in about eight years. I got into them with their debut album, Heart of Oak. I thought it was just absolutely riffy and awesome. I got their next one, Voice the Void, and well, they kind of disappeared. I actually saw this band play here in Toledo at our, you know, local, but you know, fairly well-known club, Frankie's, and they put on an awesome show. And then they just sort of vanished for a while. Yeah, I got into this band with Heart of Oak and then also just kind of forgot about them. I didn't even listen to their second album until about a month ago we were doing a live stream and one of our buddies, Jeff from Gas Masks and Hand Grenades, was talking about Ancients and I was like, holy shit, I haven't heard that band in forever. So I went back and listened to the second album and then, of course, this one. So I've been a fan for a long time, but really actually just forgot about them. Yeah, that's one of those situations where you kind of forgot you were a fan, but you were reminded why you were a fan. And for those that don't know, this is progressive metal. I guess you could just kind of just say that flat out, though the archives oddly labeled it as extreme progressive metal, which is the first time I think I've seen that uh, pop up in the archives. I guess that's a new subgenre they're throwing on there. I, I don't know. I disagree. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like I, I didn't check and see if Opeth has been relabeled that or anything like that. I don't know. They probably would just label them as posers or hipsters. <laughs> Either way, um, I wouldn't necessarily call it extreme progressive metal, but I would 100% call this progressive metal and yeah. Actually, like, probably a little bit more progressive than they were. Now, I believe this band had at least one notable lineup change in the absence. I believe, I think it was their bassist and vocalist left, or the other guitarist and vocalist left. There were two vocalists at one point, now it is narrowed down to one, and honestly, I feel like this is a little bit stronger, a little bit more focused. No shade being cast in those previous two albums, but this album feels... I don't know, just very thematically put together, the songs, the structure of the entire album and how it's laid out, this is meticulously crafted. Baseline, I would say that this band is kind of comparable to, I'd say like Opeth and Mastodon, which are kind of two different sides of the progressive metal coin, but there are definitely moments where they intersect. And I would even say bands like Lord Dying, Baroness, yeah. Huntsman, uh, if you're familiar with them, Horse Burner. It's kind of that, you know, stoner metal, doom metal, heavy metal, sort of like classic prog. Like it doesn't really come across as like very, you know, polished, clean or anything mm -hmm. like that. There's still a lot of discernible grit. Everything sounds very organic. And it's kind of a blend of like all those bands. And well, I mean, I love all those bands. Yeah. So I really have no problem with that. And the first half of this album really kind of just sets up a lot of atmosphere and a lot of space and of course just an absolute fuck ton of riffs oh my goodness and some of the most beautiful well done harmonies within those riffs i think i've ever heard those especially come into play on songs like is it your god melt the crown cloak of the vast and black but it's the really interesting kind of give and take between like their heavier side and their softer side and where again it kind of intersects because there's a lot of like acoustic and electric mm -hmm. like interplay in terms of guitars like they set up a melody with an acoustic melody and instead of dropping out that acoustic melody in favor of like big heavy electric guitars they blend the two which is definitely something you hear in a lot of Baroness and Mastodon. And those kind of like just set up the atmosphere and vibe of the songs. The opening track, Forbidden Sanctuary, which I believe is the longest track on the album, is an absolute massive buildup of just kind of, I don't know, like they're dark and kind of somber, but they're also very spacey too. Like there's some phaser effects and the guitars that come in. And then everything drops out in favor of a good chuggy riff and then well, we get these awesome vocals on here, which vocally this is a little bit different. It favors more clean vocals than the previous albums because there was a bit more of a, I wouldn't even say like a 50-50 split, like I would say like 60-40, but it was a little bit more towards the harsh, if I remember right. And even the clean vocals from 
the uh, gentlemen that left the band were a little bit more gruff. These clean vocals, I don't know, after a little while, it really kind of set in who he sounded like, and I'll be honest, he reminds me of Jerry Cantrell. And I get that. I get Jerry Cantrell. It didn't really hit me until it got to the torch. Prior to that, I made a lot of Bron Daler comparisons. Now, I will admit that he doesn't hit the higher register, like belting out those higher registers that Bron does, but in the more like mid-range moments, I still think he sounds a lot like Bron Daler. I did hear like a little bit of Braun, but again, it's, you know, Braun's got like a very, very large range in his vocals and it's the delivery itself. It kind of has that sort of like breathy kind of croon that Jerry Cantrell has and especially when they harmonize the vocals. The vocal harmonies on here are like a chorus of Jerry's. Mm -hmm. They're all telling you, well, not in this case, about how depressing their day was because that's kind of Jerry's thing. Here they're telling you these wild stories of progressive things and stuff. Probably should have paid attention to the lyrics a little bit more, but yeah, that's what I got. I didn't actually pay attention to the lyrics either. My guess is that they would be kind of cosmic as well. There's a lot of spacey moments in this record. Songs like Melt the Crown, Cloak of the Vast and Black, and the instrumental Candescence are all very spacey, very sci-fi, like a, a lot of big 80s sci-fi I picked out of the instrumental Candescence. At least like the first like six or seven tracks open up with a very kind of spacey, kind of cosmic vibe to them. There's a lot of setup and I mean, honestly, some of it kind of reminds me of like post-metal builds like Neurosis or Cult yeah. Luna, like really establish the atmosphere and then get into like all the cool riffy transitions. And I don't know, I like that because every song feels huge and spacious, mm -hmm. even some of the shorter songs in here, which shorter, I mean like the ones that are under seven minutes and six minutes, because yeah. most of them are pretty long. But that gives this album like some really cool dynamics in the sense of like these softer parts are very open and occasionally very serene, like Melt the Crown opens with beautiful acoustic melodies. And a lot of the acoustic melodies are like a little bit more dark, a little bit more sinister, mm -hmm. but that one just sounds like I don't know, you're staring into an open valley with mountains and rainbows, and it's just beautiful. It's like Alaska just before the bear mauls you. <laughs> I think the piano helps on that, too, and the you get like almost like little raindrop plucks on the keys, too, and it just it makes it sound again, you know, kind of like, yeah, just Alaska and big and beautiful and mountains and the sunshine poking over and the dew droplets. And, and then you're gored to death by a caribou. <laughs> But that gives way to these giant size riffs in here, and that is one of the things that I absolutely love about this album is not only is it obsessed with like, you know, proggy song structure and atmosphere, this album loves riffs mm -hmm. and big riffs. Like <laughs> we're talking like high on fire riffs, except, you know, proggy. Despoiled, uh, in the absence of wisdom, celestial tyrant, which isn't about Galactus, that's kind of disappointing. All these songs just have these massive riffs. And honestly, I would say just every song on here, you are guaranteed to run into a cool riffy moment. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting in terms of like, you know, the riffs that they use because None of them are like explicitly one style. You get a lot of classic heavy metal stuff that goes really well with the harmonies. You get some more like almost kind of stoner metal riffs, mm -hmm. doom metal riffs. And there are harsh vocals on here and where they set up those harsh vocals are on, well, I wouldn't call them like explicitly like death metal or black metal riffs, but mm -hmm. they are definitely heavier overall. I'd call them metal riffs, I, just straight metal riffs. I, I definitely wouldn't call anything on here death metal, although they, they do toy with it in some of the heavier songs, like The Torch or Melt the Crown, which are definitely have some very heavy, chuggy moments. But even so, I, I think it, closer to stoner metal, there, there are a couple of doomy moments, like Cloak of the Vast and Black definitely has what I would consider to be some straight doom moments in it. But yeah, I wouldn't call anything really like Heavy, heavy, it's a different kind of heavy. Or not necessarily like brutal. Like it's not like flat out like brutal, like you're just like, all right, this is the mosh pit moment. Cause I don't get like a lot of mosh pit mm -hmm. moments on here, but that isn't really what I was searching for in this anyway. But like Despoiled. Despoiled in particular, there is a much heavier section on there. Features some big gnarly growls. And there's a tremolo riff on it, which I mean, you think tremolo, you think black metal and death metal, like yeah, that's kind of their thing. But the riff they're playing, like if you, kind of took off that picking style, it would sound probably more like something you would hear on like 
the first two Sword albums. And just the notes or chords they're choosing there aren't particularly that sinister. It's not, no. you, know, like, you know, like a very evil, brutal sounding riff at all, but it is heavy. And there's even some stuff on here that I feel like is almost kind of like 90s alternative, 90s all metal, like, I mean, I already brought up Jerry Cantrell, of course, I'm going to say, yeah, there's some Alice in Chains moments on here for damn sure. There. Cloak of the Vast and Black, like, the whole, like, ending part of that song is this sort of, like, riffy jam that, honestly, it kind of sounds like Alice in Chains would. Like, it kind of has that kind of, like, open sort of, like, guitar where it's just plucking a few notes and you get kind of, like, a tribal drum pattern. The melody is a little bit different, but it has that vibe into the absence of wisdom as soon as you hear the vocal harmonies on there, uh, I instantly thought, Jerry, but that's just me. You yeah. might hear it too, though. And some of this proggy atmosphere is also due to the really awesome synths on here. The synths on here definitely go more for, like, classic prog, like Uriah Heap and Yes and stuff like that. But they also create a lot of, like, cool textures and, like, different mood settings to sort of, like, back the melodies, the guitars, or even the vocals. Candescence is one that stood out to me because the synths really take center stage on it. It's a really awesome instrumental, and just the structure of it in terms of, like, the broken down riff and how it's played, honestly, it kind of reminded me a lot of Killing Joke in particular, but it builds up into, like, kind of a heavier almost kind of toolish jam too. Yeah, and that happens too again in Melt the Crown and then the Absence of Wisdom. I can see where you might derive tool from it. I mean, some of the off-time drum patterns and syncopated riffs that show up, and again, those kind of breathy, haunting vocals. You know, it's not just Alice in Chains in there. And honestly, it all works really well. Like, that's the main thing. And again, I like the sort of uh, different side of it when you get to the back half of this album because the songs get a little bit shorter and they also start coming out of the gate like a little bit heavier. Like there's not a lot yep. of setup to them. Like Beyond Our Minds is just a riff fest right from the yep. rip. Yep. It's very hooky. I think honestly, it's one of the more vocally driven tracks mm -hmm. too. Like honestly, this could have been like a single for them. Like, all right, they're like a 90s band searching for a radio play because that's a very dated reference now. But it is kind of singlish in the fact that it really has some big vocal hooks on it. And the torch in particular kind of just gets to the heavy right away. Like big, ominous doom riffs. Yep. And ends on this like riffy jam with killer leads. Like it's very shreddy. It's just like a little bit more aggressive. But in terms of like flat out aggression and just proggy nuttiness, Celestial Tyrant... The whole back half of that just turns into this just proggy, mm -hmm. very opethy jam, mm -hmm. like lots of technical intricate riffs. But here's the thing with all the technical elements and all the synths and all the you know riffs and wild song structures we're bringing up, everything on here, I'd say, serves the song. Yeah, there wasn't a single moment actually where I thought they were doing too much. There's not a lot of showboating going on there. Instead of showboating and doing something flashy or super technical or noodly, they know how to take these songs and build the momentum naturally with just adding layers or adding something extra to the riff or adding a harmony in places. It seems like they're playing a game of Tetris and everything fits where it's supposed to. And another prime example of nothing flashy was the drum work. I'm not saying he's not a good drummer, he's a great drummer. But for the most part, most of the beats were very in the pocket, very meat and potatoes. But there were little things that he threw in to make everything special, like whether it be some great cymbal work or just a little thing like splash accents. And two prime examples of that would be Cloak of the Vast and Black and Celestial Tyrant. I don't want to say so much that there were off-time grooves, but they were really cool grooves and they had a lot of things like um, stuttered kick drums or snare or ghost notes and things like that. Just something to spice it up a little bit. I mean, really, you know, like we said, most of this is very riffy and very harmony driven, but the drums are still doing cool things. Even though they're not flashy, they're well done. They're tight. They're put together. And that's pretty much like a microcosm of this entire album, I would say, like this band. Now, in terms of like the tracks and everything, I got all my information from like the band camp and, you know, uh, metal archives, you know, just stuff you usually go to look at for all the tracks and track lengths and all that stuff. But when John came over, he said, oh, there's 11 tracks. And I was like, uh, there's uh, 10. And he's like, no, uh, Spotify actually has, uh, well, three bonus tracks on here. And two of them are re-recordings, one from their first EP and one from Heart of Oak. 
and then there's a full-on extra track because apparently if you've listened to it on spotify you deserve a bonus track just you know us physical media purchasers you know we don't deserve that we're just basic plebs fuck you spotify <laughs> but anyway it has one like legit bonus track that isn't a re-recording some other time and it's probably like kind of their ballad i guess yeah. and it's really good and i'm kind of pissed that it's only on spotify i'm not i have spotify fuck you i think it's really good i'm gonna listen to that song extra because you can't eat every dick in fact i hope you get unlimited streaming of dick into your mouth yeah regardless of what this asshole says it's a very good song it's definitely a power ballad it, for the most part it's very calm and serene there are fewer heavier moments per se for the most part it's just clean singing get a lot of acoustic guitar and big vocal moments yeah i wouldn't even call it like like an 80s power ballad like <laughs> it it has again like more of that organic sound so it's not like big washed out drums and like big power ballady, like crunchy guitars. Like here comes a big chorus, all the dudes can stand up. It's like, see, this is the part of the song I like, honey. But it's a really well written song. Honestly, some of it kind of reminds me of Yes a little bit in there too. Yes. And in terms of negatives, well, I mean, you know, the fact that that song isn't on the rest of the album, I guess that's kind of a negative, but that's just me. I honestly don't have very many. I will say that the front half of this. It does kind of open up very similarly from track to track, you know, generally the acoustic electric sort of like medley that kind of sets up the atmosphere. It doesn't necessarily get old, but it is a repeated trope mm -hmm, on here. Mm -hmm. And I will say that there are notably less harsh vocals on here. So if you really enjoyed like the heavier, harsher moments, they are still here, but they are used less. And honestly, I kind of prefer the cleans on here for the most part, which generally I kind of go for the growls, but Cleans on here, I mean, uh, they sound like Jerry. And that would be my one and only lonely gripe, would be that the first few tracks definitely start the same. But on the same token, every song is killer. <laughs> so I can't even really knock it for that. It's just samesy in the sense that it starts off, you know, acoustic and, and quiet and calm and serene. But that's not really a gripe. So... Overall, I'm gonna give this record a strong four and a half stars. There's a good mixture of harsh and clean vocals. It does lean a little bit more to the cleans, but the cleans are very well done. The riffs, there are riffs aplenty. There's not really a single song that doesn't have great riffs in it. The harmonies are killer. It, they're structured very well. It, it, there's great tracking, even though they may open up the same way sometimes, it doesn't matter because they're all killer songs. Lots of spacey moments, lots of proggy moments, and it's not overdone. It's all very tasteful, it's all very pretty. The songs are calming and relaxing for as much as they get heavy sometimes, and it's just a great mood. I had a great time listening to it. I've jammed this record three times already, I love it. If you're a big fan of this band before, you're probably still gonna be a big fan of this band, albeit there are lesser, harsher vocals, it doesn't matter because it's, again, very well done. If you're a big fan of other bands like Mastodon, Opeth, Alice in Chains, Baroness, Huntsman, you're probably really gonna dig this. I would definitely recommend checking it out. I, again, have no gripes. I am also gonna go with a four and a half. Uh, this, honestly, might be their best album. I really enjoy the first two albums. I think they are solid, they're adventurous, they really establish their sound, but this one really broadens it. Again, one of my favorite things in here is the fact that it is very proggy, very atmospheric, it's got tons of riffs. It does so many things well, and it doesn't overdo yeah. really anything to the point where it becomes just showboaty. Like everything serves the song, and the songs flow beautifully mm -hmm. because of that. You have solid riffy bangers on here, you have more atmospheric somber jams. It's well-rounded in terms of like just the different moods and textures and vibes and you know, just the atmosphere in general. This is just, an absolutely killer album from front to back, and that includes the bonus track that I don't get because I get CDs. I also love what seems to be like some 90s rock kind of callbacks, kind of like just woven in there too. I don't know, everything about this, I just flat out dig. Again, if you're a big fan of, I mean, Opeth, Mastodon, Baroness, definitely. I would even say Enslaved too. There's some stuff in I here see it. that reminds me a bit of Enslaved, especially like the last couple. Like you just kind of got those like fun, spacey, riffy yeah. jams. The keyboards too, especially. They kind of remind me of Enslaved too. I probably should have wrote that down. 
Either way, I am strongly recommending you check this one out. I think, honestly, this is one of the best prog albums that has come out this year. And I know there's a lot of year to come, and there's an Opeth album on the horizon that I'm very excited about. But oh. you know what? Opeth has some competition as of right now. So, yeah, this is absolutely killer. Check it out. So, if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe, because we do stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. We are also on Patreon. If you liked up us out there, there's a link down below, thrallsmetal.com. Our Patreon link is there. It is also on our channel, up in the banner in the bottom right-hand corner. But if you want Thralls Metal stuff, you have to go to thrallsmetal.com. We have t-shirts, both old and new. The old ones are discounted, provided we have your size. And we even have hats, too. So if you're looking for any of that stuff, click the link down below. And as always, tons of stuff going on at Thralls of Metal. Album reviews, states of metal, collection updates, because those never end. Discography rankings, discussion forums, discussion panels live streams blah 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 we keep moving we keep pumping things out because we know you guys enjoy it and that's why we do what we do we appreciate all of you our family our friends all of our subscribers everybody that interacts with us those of you that come up to us at shows that's fucking awesome we're gonna go see 200 stab wounds here shortly please come say hello to us yeah we do this all for you thank you yeah, you guys absolutely rule, and again, tons of content coming your way. So one more big thank you because of all your rulage, and we will catch you later.